Everyone seems to have a list for how to not be poor. And I've watched a ton of videos related to it. And I realized that a lot of them are just clickbaity garbage that really, really doesn't help you. It just kind of scares you. And so I dialed back to when I was in a really bad financial place. And I looked at some of the principles that I used to better myself and ultimately be on the road to wealth. And so I wanted to talk with you today about four things that I think that you could do right now that will change your financial landscape forever. It will make you happier. It will make your family happier. It will give you a sense of peace. You'll have peace of mind. You'll have... Um, lack of worry, which is which is great. You're going to be a lot more grateful and have a lot more gratitude for what you have when you start accomplishing these things. And the, the, the thing about it that you really need to know is that when you're trying to get yourself out of a hole, when you say, all right, I don't really want to be poor anymore, what does that look like? Well, I like to say if you're focusing on the big things, the little things will take care of themselves. And that's ultimately how I got myself out of consumer debt and on the road to wealth was I really just focused on the big things and the little things weren't really that important. And so when you think about the occasional Starbucks drink or something like that or going out to the movies and you're like, oh my gosh, that's making me poor or this subscription service is making me poor. That's really not true. There are four things, though, that I believe are making you poor, and you can change them right now. So let's get started. One of the things that is making you poor is literally hiding in plain sight. It's sitting right in your driveway. We live in a culture where cars are just an ultimate status symbol and I think that that's actually really sad because what it makes the average American do is it makes them go out and buy a car that they really can't afford. And the numbers really kind of show that because I mean if you look at a car payment let's say the average car payment is well over $700 a month right now and that's just the car payment you're not factoring in depreciation or taxes or anything else related to that and so you're probably looking at $1,250 to $1,300 for the average car each month to maintain it and keep it going and make sure that you know you've checked all your boxes to keep the car alive that's really a lot of money and so if you have two of those sitting in your driveway it just makes it even worse so you're basically dropping 2500 bucks a month into a car if you and your spouse have a car that's you know fairly new you're making a payment on and a lot of families have that that is absolutely making you poor auto loan debt is really a dangerous venture because you're paying on an, an asset that is depreciating every single day. Every time that car sits in your driveway day after day, or every time you drive it, you are basically killing the value. And you're paying on that, and you're continuing to pay on that, and continuing to pay on that. That's really not a good place to be. And if you're wanting to be you know, wealthy in your life, getting rid of car payments is step one. You gotta really address those car payments immediately and say, all right, um, let's work on our debt. Let's maybe go on the debt snowball, which is where you list all of your debts, smallest to largest by the amount that you owe, not the interest rate. And you start tackling your debt and on that list will be your automobile or your automobiles. Either get your automobile paid off or get it moved along so you can uh, get out from under that vehicle. I made a video about that a little while back and I'm going to link it in the description below if y'all want to check it out. It's a really good video. It talks about, you know, if you do need to sell your vehicle, it gives you kind of a step by step of how you can do that to get yourself out of this because the biggest wealth killer, like I said, is what's sitting in your driveway. Americans just absolutely love credit card debt and student loan debt. And it really shows because we have over a trillion dollars of credit card debt. We 
just eclipsed that and we have I think last I looked at 1.7 trillion dollars of student loan debt and so a lot of people are using their credit cards as an emergency fund which is not a good idea <laughs> you don't want to do that um, and people are plunking down tens of thousands of dollars of the bank's money to get this degree and they're hoping that it'll have a strong ROI but in today's world that's not always the case and so they're stuck with all of this debt and if you find yourself there it will keep you poor credit cards and student loans will keep you poor because you're constantly throwing money at it credit cards have horrible APR so you're looking at north of 20% APR that you're paying on those cards which is insanity and with the student loans because you have so many years that you've gone to school the Average American, I think, is has about thirty-eight thousand dollars of student loan debt. I mean, that's a car. That's crazy. Um, but that's where we are. And so I've talked about it a little bit before, but I want to go in a little bit more detail here about the debt snowball because if you want to get out of this situation and you want to take point two here and really take it seriously. I do recommend using the debt snowball. The debt snowball was made famous by a guy named Dave Ramsey, who you may know, but it's been around longer than that. I really like the tool because it has a lot of psychological elements to it. And if you are willing to understand that finances are really about 80 to 90% your emotions and the person that you're looking looking back at at the mirror and it's really only about 10% of actually understanding numbers um, then you'll really appreciate using something like the debt snowball because as human beings when we do something that requires a deep amount of sacrifice you have to have some psychological wins along the way, some people that are encouraging you or goals that you can check off. You've checked that box because you already accomplished it. And so listing your debts smallest to largest by the amount that you owe, not the interest rate, and then paying minimum payments on all of the other debts, but attacking that smallest debt with everything that you've got is going to not only get that, get that small debt out of the way and it's gonna make you feel good, and it's going to free up that cash so you can move to debt two, then debt three, then debt four, and get it all knocked out. My guess is you probably are going to have credit cards sitting at the top of your snowball, and you know, cars and student loans are going to be towards the bottom of of your snowball. But everybody's a little bit different. But you just need to keep that formula in mind. List your debts smallest to largest by the amount that you owe, not the interest rate, and knock that consumer debt out because it's so incredibly worth it and so the the thing that you need to kind of keep in mind is that if you keep these credit cards around if you keep student loans around um, there's just so much money that you're putting into that every month that it, it, you're not gonna be wealthy it's just not gonna be possible so they've got to go they, they the two cannot exist in the same the same space unless you are making crazy money and if you're making crazy money why would you have the debt so get the debt out of the way um, get that consumer debt just gone and you're gonna like your life a lot more trust me you're gonna have a sense of peace that you may not have ever had before when I went through it and I got out on the other side I was a changed man I was a completely different person and it allowed me to be more present with my wife and my daughter and you know be be a better dad and laugh a little bit more and enjoy enjoy living enjoying life but when you start thinking about financial stress and you let that just spin and spin and spin and spin in your head you really aren't enjoying your life now are you the next item that keeps you poor is something that's rather insidious because it is presented to you in social gatherings and it's something that's a lot of fun and involves get togethers and, and things of that nature. And that's food, food related things. Um, let's take a look at restaurants real quick. I think that we have reached a point with restaurants where the price has far eclipsed the value that you're getting in a restaurant. You've got a couple of things going on there. First, when you go out to a restaurant, you're gonna drop 65 or $70 if you're two people, and you're going to get something that is uh, not as healthy as what you would cook at home. 
Um, it is not going to taste as good as what you cook at home, most likely. And three, it's going to absolutely kill your budget. And if you're willing to sit down and really do an audit of how much money you've spent on food in the last year, I promise you that you're going to be really surprised at how much is actually going out the door because you'll start adding up those things and be like, oh my, oh my God, oh my gosh, oh wow, we spent that much. And yeah, you have. My wife and I actually sat down and, you know, we, we did that ourselves and we said, you know, this is this just really isn't worth it because we're not really enjoying the restaurant experience like we used to. Uh, it's so expensive to go. The food quality, in my opinion, has slipped. I mean, DoorDash, you basically need to take out a mortgage on your house to get DoorDash or, or Uber Eats to your house. And so that's just not a good idea. There are some instances where where those you know delivery services are up to 91% more expensive using the delivery service than actually going to the restaurant, much less you know actually cooking the meal at home. So that's uh, something to certainly consider. So my wife and I have have um, you know tallied up our budget and you know for 2024 related to food, and we basically just said okay. We're going to spend $100 a week on food that we get from the market. And that's, you know, $5,200 a year, which um, we are a family of three and we believe that we can do that. We've done it before and we can certainly do it again. But uh, the thing that we really dialed in on very, very carefully was, you know, how much are we actually going to spend on restaurants in a year? And, you know, my, my advice is, you know, don't let restaurants cumulatively get more than 1% of what you're, you know, taking home in a year. So if you take home $100,000, don't spend more than $1,000 at restaurants in the entire year. And so we looked at that and said, what are the, what are the reasons why we would even want to go to a restaurant? And we could really only come up with two. And that's, um, that's that, you know, there might be some anniversary or something like that, or birthday, some special occasion, or where that we're traveling and we, we really need to get into a restaurant because we, you know, we, we don't have food in the car or something like that. So those are, those are the only two times that we are budgeting in 2024 to actually go to restaurants. So, um, so we don't expect to go a lot and what we are anticipating is um better blood pressure <laughs> um you know tastier food that we that we really do enjoy and um a wallet that's a lot fatter with cash because we're not blowing it on uh, on restaurants and when you go and you look at what you're spending at the market too that's kind of a big deal we we also noticed that we were overspending a lot because we were going to costco well costco is meant to be a you know a tool that you know actually saves you money but if you tend to put things in your cart like they want you to then you're going to wind up spending more than you anticipated and that's what they want you to do so we just decided well we're not going to go to Costco but once a month and we'll have a set list when we go and we don't put anything else in our cart and that's going to help us stay within that hundred dollars a week that will allow us to um, just invest a little bit more money because that was actually our intention is we want to we want to invest and save a little bit more money than than what we're doing right now and we were trying to find every way that we could do that and we were just absolutely astonished at how much money we were dropping um, even go into places like Costco, but definitely restaurants. Watch your restaurants and you'll be so surprised. Just take all of your like all of your statements and add up all the restaurants that you have uh, that you've purchased in, you know, in the year of 2023. And my guess is it's going to be a lot bigger than you think it is. And that is definitely something that's keeping you poor. There's no question about it. If you're willing to just cut that out, first of all, your health is going to vastly improve because you're not eating like heavily salted garbage you're eating you're eating something that you cooked that you control you control the portions so you're not overeating all of those things are are worth doing our health is more important than anything and if we don't have our health then who cares about wealth <laughs> so um we we need to be um we need to be vigilant of that food is one way that we can really hurt ourselves financially, even with our own health, if we're not careful.
The fourth item that that I believe that is keeping you poor is the fact that you only have one job, one income. Um, you know, you don't have multiple streams of income like millionaires do. It's said that millionaires have up to seven streams of income, but what you have to kind of look at is that they didn't open up seven different businesses and try to run those. They opened up one business and that business took off and they took the money from that and they invested it and they invested it and they invested it, creating those multiple streams of income. And so what can you do as a person who is, um, who is wanting to get out of this hole? Well, the first thing obviously is get yourself out of consumer debt because if you can just focus on getting out of the consumer debt and have some productive hobbies to go along with, with what you're doing to actually make a living in your nine to five. And what you'll find is that it'll, it will be a little slow to build that productive hobby into something that will that you can monetize, but once once it's monetized, it kind of grows exponentially and you'll find that you don't need that, that nine to five job anymore. You're making so much money doing that, uh, that hobby that you can then take the money and do exactly what the, what the, what the millionaires do. You invest that money and create multiple streams of income. So that's something to consider. Be, uh, be very purposeful about the time that you have after 5 p.m. because if you only have one income and you know or one job and you're coming home and you're you know laying down on the sofa and you're watching TV because I'm so tired, I don't even feel like cooking, let's just order something on on uh, on Uber Eats. You're you're squandering the time that you could be doing something to to learn something, to expand your knowledge and expand your ability to make a little bit of extra money. And my advice to you is pick some pick some things, pick some hobbies that you uh, that you actually really enjoy that you could get lost in. Um, one of the things that that I have enjoyed uh, recently is. Uh, I have an Audible subscription, and with that Audible subscription, I can listen to a book a month, and uh, I don't actually like to sit there and read. It might be that I'm a little dyslexic, I'm not sure, but when, when you put an audiobook in my ear, uh, that works, and I can digest that, and I really get good, solid information, and that's something that is productive with my time. I'm absorbing knowledge and taking that in that I can then regurgitate and use in my in my life. And you can do the same thing. It's all about, you know, what it is that you've got kind of staring in front of you. What would you like to do with your life that would make you uh, a better person in two years or three years? Um, I heard once that if you um, if you set your mind to anything and and you make sure that you have a written plan and a goal, in five years you'll get exactly what you want. But a lot of people only see what you're like at that five year mark after you've done all of this work in between. It's that all it's all that work in between that you really have to you know be prepared for. It's it's a slow climb, but you will get there. So I would say this to you, if you're willing to kind of look at your whole financial life in a snapshot, focus on these big things. Focus on getting out of auto loan debt, credit card debt, student loan debt, and try to find a way to build up your, um, your income because there are lots of things that you can do that don't require a degree or a, or a certification or a class. A good example of that is um, video editing or website development, um, website design. Um, I, I taught myself web design years ago. I didn't take a class, didn't take a single class. I taught myself web development. I didn't take a single class and I made six figures doing that as a career. So yeah, it can be done. You don't you don't need to um, you don't need to have a big fancy degree. So when you're when you're stepping into this space and you're working on these four things, remember that we're in the information age. So you've got so much information just at your fingertips. So don't let that be a deterrent for you. Let that let that be an encouragement for you, so you can do something great with your life. So that's where I'm gonna leave you today. If you got any value from this video, it would really help us out a ton if you would uh, like this video and consider subscribing. We would be honored to have your subscription. We're a new channel and we're growing it uh, as a family. 
um, using the principles that got us out of debt and on the road to uh, wealth and prosperity. We want that for you all. And we want to be able to share that with as many people as possible. So you interacting with the channel in this way tells YouTube that you liked it and they're going to show this video to more people and we would really appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching and um, we'll see you in the next video.